Hello, my name is David Barr. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of Cryo LNG here at Taylor Wharton. Taylor Wharton builds cryogenic equipment to enable the use of natural gas where there is no pipeline available or when you want to replace a different fuel like diesel. The purpose of today's presentation is to give you a basic understanding of liquid natural gas. What it is, where it comes from, and how you can potentially use it. So what is natural gas? Well, natural gas comes from drilling of oil and gas wells. When you drill an oil and gas well, you'll typically get oil and natural gas occurring together. It's the world's cleanest burning fossil fuel, and you use it pretty much every day already. It's transported to you for your use, typically by a pipeline that comes from somewhere else to your factory or to your home where you burn it to light your stoves, heat your furnaces, or whatever you might want to heat or use natural gas for. But if you don't have a pipeline, how do you get it? Well, there's two ways. You can compress it in called CNG or compressed natural gas, and that's where you compress it like in a scuba tank down to 3,600 pounds per square inch and then transport these scuba bottles from one point to another. The other way is to liquefy it and freeze the gas and it condenses it into a liquid where we put it into, once again, fancy bottles and transport it from point A to point B. Well, what's inside this natural gas? What's it made of? Well, natural gas is not propane. That's the first thing I want to let you know. It's not LPG. That's actually what you put into your grill. That's uh, the one down there listed uh, about a third of the way down on the left side. What natural gas is, is primarily methane, which is the simplest hydrocarbon. Carbon molecule with four hydrogens. That's why it burns clean. There's less carbon molecules to burn. And it's made up about 90%, 95% natural gas methane is, and then little bits of ethane, little bits of propane, little bit of butane. That's the stuff in your cigarette lighter. And then, you know, if you looked at what gasoline or diesel fuel is made of, it's made out of octane, or the stuff over on the bottom right side, with eight carbon molecules, which make it very difficult to break all those bonds. And that's why sometimes you'll see black sooty smoke coming out of old diesel engines. They just can't break all those bonds, and that's why it burns dirty. So liquid natural gas, in order to do that, we use a science called cryogenics. And that's the science of using ultra-cold temperatures to liquefy gases to transport them from point A to point B. What we do is we cool the gases down from anywhere from 238 degrees below zero to 450 degrees below zero. Really cold. But when we do that, it goes from a gaseous phase, like the air we're breathing, into a liquid phase, and then it takes up 1 600th of its original volume which means that you can put a whole bunch of molecules into a really small bottle. Most of the gases that we breathe, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, hydrogen, all these gases exist in the air and they can all be liquefied. And that's how the world moves it from point A to point B. So when you think about how a hospital stores medical samples or diseases, they use nitrogen to do that in medical supplies and samples. They use oxygen and argon in factories for welding or for oxygen supply. And that's typically stored in big white bottles like that outside of factories. Most of the pop you drink is, uh, uses liquid carbon dioxide to make all the bubbles in it. When you go to McDonald's, that's where your fizz is coming from in your pop. And what we're here to talk about today is down in the bottom picture there is uh, liquid natural gas transported by trailers from its source out to the end use applications like this station here. Now what are these cryogenic bottles made out of? What do they do? Well basically it's like your thermos that you use to keep your coffee warm with all day long. It's just a super fancy version of it. What we do is a bottle inside of a bottle where in between the two bottles we use high-tech insulation and then we draw a vacuum out to suck all the air molecules which provides a super efficient vacuum. So in essence, even though a thermos can keep your coffee warm all day, we can keep your coffee warm for years <laughs> inside of one of our bottles because of the efficiency of the, of the design. So how is LNG made? Well, it's made using this technique. The world's population is growing. And for many, living standards will continue to improve. As a result, global energy demand is expected to double by 2050. 
To help meet this demand, gas will form an increasingly important role. Natural gas is plentiful and is the cleanest burning fossil fuel. But some natural gas resources are in remote locations. Transporting the gas long distances by pipeline can be costly and impractical. The solution? We liquefy the gas by cooling it, which shrinks its volume for easier, economical, and safe transportation by ship. So how is liquefied natural gas produced? Natural gas extracted from the ground contains impurities, water, and other associated liquids. First, it is processed to clean it. It goes through a series of pipes and vessels where gravity helps separate the gas from some of the heavier liquids. Other impurities are then stripped out. The natural gas passes through a water-based solvent that absorbs carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. These would otherwise freeze when the gas is cooled and so cause blockages. Next, any remaining water is removed, as this would also freeze. Finally, remaining lighter natural gas liquids, mainly propane and butane, are extracted to be sold separately or used as a refrigerant later in the cooling process. Traces of mercury are also filtered out. Now the purified natural gas, methane with some ethane, is ready to be liquefied. This happens in heat exchangers. The coolant, chilled by giant refrigerators, absorbs the heat from the natural gas. It cools the gas to minus 162 degrees centigrade, shrinking its volume by 600 times. This turns it into a clear, colorless, non-toxic liquid, liquefied natural gas, or LNG, that is much easier to store and transport. The LNG is kept in insulated tanks until it is ready for loading into a specially designed LNG ship or carrier. Some of the LNG is shipped overseas and regasified to our homes and businesses. LNG for transport is offloaded into separate storage tanks and a midway facility known as a brake bulk terminal. Small carriers supply barges, ferries, cruise liners, container ships, and tankers in ports, on rivers, and in coastal areas. Shell has also helped develop technology to liquefy natural gas on a small scale. This approach uses movable modular liquefaction plants, built in sections to be scaled up or down and potentially moved to another location. The plants can supply transport customers directly, making LNG more accessible. Railroads and tanker trucks carry the LNG to storage tanks at refueling stations for large trucks. Double-walled, vacuum-insulated tanks keep the LNG cool. The pumps and gauges look different, but pumping LNG is like pumping conventional diesel. Compared to conventional diesel, as a transport fuel, LNG has the potential to offer significant fuel cost savings, as well as economic and environmental benefits for operators of large truck fleets and marine vessels. In future, LNG usage may expand into other areas, including rail and mining. Shell believes LNG can help meet the growing energy demand by making more use of natural gas, the cleanest burning fossil fuel. So that's a great uh, introductory video that gives you an idea of natural gas. It's, as they point out in, the, in there, natural gas has been distributed for over 50 years all around the world. It's how it gets from one continent to another where they have natural gas and you want it. So when we talk about importing natural gas, this is how it's done. It's transferred in ships like this from one continent to another. But it's also very, very safe. And this video will give you an idea of some of its safety characteristics. This is liquefied natural gas. It's colorless, odorless, and non-toxic, but very cold. As you know, natural gas does not occur in nature as a liquid. Only when we cool natural gas to 260 degrees below zero does it become a liquid. If we attach the balloon to the top of the container, we can see it filling up with natural gas as the LNG warms. You may think this liquid form of natural gas is dangerously flammable, like gasoline, but it's significantly different. We can even extinguish a burning cigarette in liquefied natural gas because the liquid is not flammable. What would happen if liquefied natural gas were spilled into the water? We'll show you something using these goldfish. Not to worry, we won't harm the fish. If LNG were spilled onto open water, the liquefied natural gas would not mix with water because it's insoluble. 
You can see that it warms rapidly, like it's boiling, and evaporates off rapidly and completely. This means that a liquefied natural gas spill would not require any environmental cleanup, because once it evaporates, there's nothing left. When we add LNG to this glass of water, the liquefied natural gas evaporates and it's perfectly safe to drink. The same kind of minimal change to the environment happens if liquefied natural gas is spilled onto the ground. It evaporates quickly and won't sink into the ground or leave any residue behind, although it would freeze any moisture in the soil. See, the soil is completely dry. There is nothing to clean up. Clearly, there is always a potential of a fire if LNG is accidentally released and there is an ignition source. But an explosion just isn't what happens with LNG. Let's pour this LNG onto the table. As we can see, it evaporates quickly, leaving nothing left to catch on fire. On the other hand, if oil were spilled, it would be there until it was cleaned up. And some oils, like gasoline, would be much more flammable for a longer time. Liquefied natural gas is a practical, safe, reliable, and environmentally friendly way for all of us to enjoy the benefits that natural gas brings to the quality of our everyday lives. It's clean energy for today and beyond. So that hopefully will uh, dispel a few of the rumors of the dangers of LNG. Um, it's not perfectly safe, but it's much safer than many of the other fuels we commonly use every day. So what's happening now is we're seeing a lot of new emerging markets because of the pricing of natural gas and the abundance, which I'll talk about a little bit more here later. Many new applications are being developed where they want to use natural gas as a replacement, as example in asphalt plants or brick factories, the railroad industry, mine hall, trucking, marine, oil and gas drilling, and on-site power are just one of the many new emerging markets for LNG where we can replace diesel with a cleaner burning and more economical fuel. And why do they do it? Well, it's pretty simple. It's cheaper. Natural gas prices are amazingly low compared to diesel these days. It's cleaner. burns much, much cleaner. And here in the United States, it's domestic. And as markets develop their shale capabilities in other countries, it will also be a domestic fuel, helping to alleviate the need to import natural gas. Now, when we think about using natural gas versus what we traditionally are used to, which is diesel, it's virtually the same process. When you look at diesel on the bottom here, it goes, you know, comes out of the well as crude oil, you refine it, then you transport it in a truck to an on site storage. Then you dispense it to the vehicle you want to do. Well, natural gas is virtually the same. It comes out of a well, we liquefy it, we transport it by a truck to a storage facility, and then we dispense it into the vehicle. So it's really just the same business model with a different fuel that happens to be cryogenic instead of at room temperature. Now here's kind of some of the exciting stuff. So you mentioned in the Shell video, the world as it grows and all the new emerging economies are going to dramatically increase the demand for hydrocarbons over the next 20 and 30 years. And where is this going to come from? Well, fortunately, we've got a lot of new shale oil and shale gas available to do that. But it's just going to start to offset the total energy demand. The good news is, even when we roll up all that energy demand coming forward, the projected pricing for natural gas, which is that line on the bottom, is projected to be considerably less than that of crude oil, which is the line on the top. Basically anywhere from one half to one third less. Go for many, many years is the forecast. Now where is all this abundant gas coming from? I'm sure you've all heard the term of fracking. Well, what is fracking? This will tell you. Shale formations underlie much of the United States. They are the source of natural gas, and oil. Historically, the formations have been difficult to drill. Today, it's possible with the technology of fracking. In North Dakota's Bakken formation, fracking started in 2006. Nearly 8,000 active wells now dot the landscape. Deep underground, horizontal pipes stretch up to two miles long. The Iverson well, drilled in 2010, illustrates the fracking process. 
The well plunges nearly two miles down with cement and steel casing inserted to prevent leaks into groundwater. The well curves when it reaches the Bakken, layers of shale that sandwich a layer of sandstone. The pipe follows the sandstone because that's where shale oil collects. Fracking begins by forcing plastic balls down the well. The balls open sleeves in the pipe to expose holes. Fluid is then pumped down the well under extremely high pressure. The fluid shoots through the holes and fractures the rock. Over the course of three days, this well fracked the rock 29 times. The births show where fissures were created. Once fracking is done, Oil is released and flows up the well. The used fluid, which contains toxic materials, flows up with the oil. Some of the fluid is recycled. The rest is pumped into disposal wells deep below groundwater. The long-term environmental effects of fracking are unknown, but in coming years, the number of wells in North Dakota is expected to jump from today's 8,000 to 50,000. So as they point out in that video, there's a numerous shale plays here in North America. And it's really transformed the whole energy picture globally. Um, these shales have only been developed over the last decade or so, and now they're really going into high gear over the last four or five years. But as a result of that, the United States is now the number one gas producer and uh, basically have more oil reserves than Saudi Arabia. So we'll become, over time, as this is all developed, a net exporter of oil and gas and no longer an importer. But it's not just a U.S. phenomena. There happens to be oil shales and gas shales all around the world. South America, Australia, South Africa, Europe, China, India, Russia, all have shale plays that can be developed and do, to, to create their own domestic oil resource. What I like in this picture is, is that you note that there's not too much of it in the Middle East. So it allows us to you know, possibly you know, stop being so dependent upon the Middle East for all of our oil and gas. Well, to utilize this, there's a number of different projects going on to bring natural gas to the consumer. And relative to over-the-road trucks, couple of companies, Clean Energy is building 150 LNG fueling stations at Flying J truck stops all across the United States so that you can drive your semi truck from point A to point B. Shell is proposing to do a similar program at Travel America projects starting next year, build 100 of them. And numerous local companies like Quick Trip, Blue Energy in Utah and others and UPS are launching stations for their own use and for the public use all across the United States. In our group, Cryo LNG, we're typically focused on what we call the high horsepower applications, industrial users, um, fuel stations, liquefaction, mine haul, rail transport, and marine. These are the applications where we're going to have the biggest economic impact because of the sheer volume that each of these systems uses in fuel. We make all sorts of LNG tanks. We make them small for fuel stations. We make the medium ones for industrial applications. And we make jumbo tanks for uses on ships and for, make, and for out storage of LNG and liquefiers and bunkering barges for ships. Taylor Warden also offers the ability to do all your installs for many, many different applications. With our partnership with the HOM Group out of Barcelona, we're able to provide you not only the equipment, but the installation and the design of your system, giving you a full turnkey opportunity to move forward and utilize liquid natural gas. Thank you very much for your time. Please contact our website or call our number here, and we'd be glad to answer any other questions you have regarding liquid natural gas. Have a great day. Thank you.